I have entitled my message as God's church imparts blessing. Let me repeat again. God's church imparts blessing. I'm simply telling you that as elects, it is imperative for us to know we will be established in the gospel of God's righteousness that constitutes Jesus' baptism, death and resurrection, that the church, God's church, conveys or imparts or extends all blessings. Hallelujah. Basically, my message is going to be on this, that it's God's church that actually gives us all the blessing that God talks about. Hallelujah. Let me straight take you to a scripture verse in Ephesians 1, verses 3 to 10. Blessed and worthy of praise be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms in Christ. Verse 4, just as in His love He chose us in Christ, actually selected us for Himself as His own before the foundation of the world, so that we would be holy, that is, consecrated, set apart for Him, purpose-driven, and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined and lovingly planned for us to be adopted to Himself as His own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the kind intention and good pleasure of His will. Verse 6, To the praise of His glorious grace and favor, which is so freely bestowed on us in the beloved His Son, Jesus Christ, in Him we have redemption, that is our deliverance and salvation through His blood, which paid the penalty for our sin and resulted in the forgiveness and complete pardon of our sin in accordance with the creatures of His grace. Verse 8, which He lavished on us in all wisdom and understanding with practical insight. He made known to us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure which He purposed in Christ with regard to the fulfillment of the time that the end of history... <coughs> <clears throat> the climax of the ages to bring all things together in Christ, both things in the heavens and things on the earth. Wow, a long passage. Many times we say that the blessings are spiritual blessings in Christ. But I think the scripture finished off the very important statement. Things in heavens and things on the earth. You know, church, God is a blesser. When He created this universe, He had the intent of blessing in every aspect of our lives, both physical and spiritual. But at the fall, you can see, when Adam fell, firstly, his spirit was severed or alienated from God. There was a brokenness in his heart. There's no more fellowship with God. And he lost the spiritual aspect of all the blessing that God intended for him. And subsequent to that, because sin entered the world through one man, there's the, we call it the ripple effect of sin. The whole physical world also fell together with him. So man began to have that deficit all around him. Everything was a bit chaotic. And we found that because his spiritual dead, his soul is also dead, and his physical aspect of it also was dying. And sooner or later, we know that he died physically. This is the way that it is today. Everybody who are born into this world from the Adamic sin, spiritually dead, they will soon spiritually die once. All of us have to die once spiritually. Physically as well. And you can see the whole world is going on that cause. The whole universe, nature as well, is dying every day. No matter what man is trying to do to arrest it, but it will because God has set it in that mode. It's in ruins. Now, what did God do through Christ Jesus? He sent His Son into the world so that we can be made alive in the Spirit. That's what we call born again. By believing what His Son did, by uniting at the baptism, dying with Him and rising up, we are now spiritually made alive. Are we saying that we won't die physically? No, that cause will continue. Physically we will die, the whole earth and every nature will die as well. 
But because we are born again, now, what happens here, our death becomes a pathway or a gateway. For those who are not born again, they, the death becomes a gateway to eternal condemnation. But because we are born again, death becomes to us a pathway or a gateway to eternal redemption. Now, in this redemption, right now, spiritually, we are already enjoying it. There will come a time when Jesus will restore us in the physical realm as well. Give us a new body, a spiritual body, physicality is there, a glorious body, and God will set this whole universe, new heaven, new earth, physically, absolutely in peace that He intended. All that God's heart was to bless man will be given to us back again. There will be no death, no sickness, man will not die, there's no devil, everything will be perfect as you always intended. This scripture is simply saying that all these things are put back in order in Christ. It's in Christ that the church is formed. Christ is the head of the church, the body of Christ. It's in Christ that, so it is through the church that, firstly, we receive spiritual blessings. And subsequent to that, we by faith were living in it. We are also by faith enjoying the physical aspect as well. But yes, one day we may also have to die. But that will continue because when Christ comes back, we will be raised again from our dead. And God will give us a new spiritual body to enjoy the spiritual life with Him forever and ever throughout eternity. That's the plan of God. And all these things are being once again restored to us or given to us in Christ. So it's in Christ where the church is formed. Christ is the body, the head, and the body is simply the people who have believed, who have left the world and united with Him in spirit. That's what we call the church of God, the body of Christ. So I'm trying to bring across today through my message that all blessings, whether it's spiritual or physical, is through the church of God. Isn't it so, church? When we came to church, that's the only time that we learned that something is wrong with us spiritually. When we're living out there in the world, we never recognized that. We went about living like the rest of the people in the world. But the church brought us to a place where we admitted that we are dead to God because we realized sin was in our heart, unbelief. As a result, we were dying spiritually and also physically. And we realized through the scripture, it's through the church that such a knowledge came. It's not because we are wise, we are smarter, we are more spiritual because of our effort. No. And how do we receive our forgiveness of sin? It's through the church of God. You don't get the forgiveness of sin preached or advocated or promoted in the world. It's a church who does that. Because in the church that the manifold blessings of God is once again restored to men. Where we receive forgiveness, we receive the indwelling Holy Spirit to seal our redemption, and then God gives us eternal life in His Son, Jesus. So every blessing, though it may seem spiritual, it's from the church. And we have not tasted the physical aspect of it in Christ, though by faith we can. So the church is basically an extension of God's kingdom. God is advancing this kingdom. And all blessings are given through the church of God. That's my point today. And I'm going to help you to understand the church is so important to the believers that all blessings in our life on this side of the world is from the church of God. Hallelujah. Let me quote you another scripture to back up what I'm saying. It's taken from Matthew 16 verses 18 to 19. And this is what Jesus is saying. And I say to you that you are Peter. Then on this rock, I will build my church. Who is building the church? Jesus Christ. I will build my church. And the gates of Hades or death will not empower it by preventing the resurrection of the Christ. And I will give you the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you lose, permit, declare lawful on earth will have already been loosed in heaven. What does this scripture say? That Jesus is saying that I am the one who is building the church. And in my church, there are three things that will happen. Which in fact encompasses all things 
in a life of a human. Three things. Number one, he's simply saying this, that the gates of hell shall not prevail. In the church of God, we are born again, there's no more death. Yes, physically one day we will separate from our spirit. It's a gateway for eternal redemption and blessing. But Satan can never ever put us to death again because we are passed from death to perpetual life. We have already entered the kingdom of God. No devil on the face of this earth. A true church. That's why, and I mentioned to you when I was doing the welcome and greetings. Why we can stay together. No matter what, whether it's CMCO, whatever that comes against us, we can stay together because we are a body of Christ. It's Christ himself personally who is building the church and he will ensure that the gates of hell shall not prevail in our life, our family, our children. We will stay strong. When you are born again, you can be assured the doctrine of preservation is very strong. God will preserve us. And number two, in the church of God that Christ is building, there is what we call the keys of the kingdom of God. We have the privilege of leading others into the kingdom of God. In this church where he is building, there is a message of hope, a message of salvation, the gospel of God's righteousness, which is being preached freely. Those who walk in here like us, Admit who we are through the word of God. Acknowledge that we are a sinner. Receive our forgiveness in Christ freely. Receive the wonderful Holy Spirit and our eternal life. And there you are, your body of Christ. You are in the part of the church of God. There's a key given to the church of God because God is using us to reach out. And number three, the authority church. Very important. We have the authority. Already everything's already been settled in Christ. And whatever that we do according to the will of God, whatever we bind, it will be bound. Whatever we lose, it will be loose because it's already been done. And only we have the secrets. We know the will of God. We know the mysteries of God. We know how it's been accomplished. So when we walk in the Spirit, according to the will of God, we have the authority to change things in our life, the family, the people around and everything else. Because why? We can walk according to the perfect will of God because we are born again and we are a church of Jesus Christ. So it's so important, this is my introduction to you, to lay down the principle that the church of God is a place where all blessings are imparted or conveyed or given or bestowed to a believer or a saint who is God's people. We're being set apart for a sanctified life. We're being set apart for God and His purposes. We are a church. In this church at NCCKL, as your shepherd, let me assure you that all blessings will be released from the church of God. I've got three important points, church, that I want to enlarge you and help you to understand. Any church that is not built before I get to the three points here, yeah? any church that is not built and approved by God is useless. No matter how many churches exist in the world, no matter how big their church, how great their preachers are, but without Christ building that church, there is no blessing. The church that Christ builds, all blessings come through that church, which is God's church. We found it. If there's no authentic church in this world, there will be no one who would be able to receive God's blessing. Thank God we came to a church where Christ is building. And because of that, we receive salvation. We receive new life. God is doing marvelous things in our life. And He's given to us so much over the years at NCCKL. In today's message, I want to teach each one of us, you as well as me, when I was preparing these scriptures and this message, God spoke to me so deeply and enlightened me many things that the single most important thing that you must always remember that God would only bless His people through the church of God. It's God's church will be the source of all our blessing. Without it, none of us can receive the manifold blessing, as I mentioned to you earlier, the forgiveness of sins, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, a spirit-filled life, a grace life, a citizenship in heaven, acceptance in the beloved, 
redeemed life from the curse of the law. All these blessings, yes, may sound like spiritual, all of it, but yet, as I mentioned to you, by faith, we can also have the physical blessings as well as we walk according to the will of God and the Spirit of Christ. And of course, when Christ comes back, everything will be given to us instantly at His coming. All blessings. You know, no matter how hard we try to work on this and try to use our effort, I've tried it in a former church, trying to attain blessings, to receive blessings. It never worked. It's all just trying. And just I've got to deceive myself into believing that I've got something to offer. But actually, when I look back, nothing I received. Because that's not the church that God is approved and God is working. But in this church, God is working. And according to the will of God, all blessings will come through or conveyed through the church of God or God's church. So now, I just want you to pay attention with three important points. Number one, faith in the word of promise. I've taken a scripture verse from the Old Testament to validate to you that today we are born again and we are qualified to receive all these blessings because of the word of promise. We did not believe anything else. We believed the word of promise. Our salvation was attained not because of what we did or what we did not do. We simply believed what God promised. God promised to send His Son into the world and He kept His promise and He sent His Son into the world. And we believe according to the scripture, He came by the water and the blood. And because of that, we are born again according to the word of promise. Let me show you through scripture. Genesis 50 verse 24. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die. But God will surely take care of you and bring you out of this land to the land which he promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So this is a scripture that jo Joseph is about to die. But he knew that God has promised him. And true enough, we all know, after his death, the whole nation of Israel developed from that family of Jacob, the 12 sons. From 70 they begin to increase into almost 2 million people. And God kept that promise. Because you'll find that the next scripture, just like how today we have been saved, even the Old Testament, it's all according to the word of promise. In Exodus 2, 23 to 25, now it happened after a long time, about 40 years, that the king of Egypt died. And children of Israel, Jacob, groaned and sighed because of the bondage. And they cried out. And their cry for help because of their bondage ascended to God. Verse 24, so God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God saw the sons of Israel and God took notice of them and was concerned about them, knowing all, understanding all, remembering all. What he's trying to say here? So it's a word of promise that God gave to Abraham. The time really came. 400 years later, God said, you live in a strange land and I will raise a deliverer. And it's according to the word of promise that God, even though they were crying for many years before that, by the time the time came, God kept his promise. He sent his deliverer, Moses. He raised him among them and sent them back to them to, 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 to lead the people out of bondage and to lead them to the land of Canaan, the land of promise of milk and honey. This is a resemblance of how God will keep his promise. God will never give us promise if he can't keep his promises. And every promise that God gives, He will keep His promises. And we saw that happened. In Mark 1, verses 2 and 3, As it is written, Forever remains the writing of the prophet Isaiah, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, a voice of one shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, and make His path straight. Now this is actually a composite quotation of two different prophets. Prophet Isaiah and Prophet Malachi, where they prophesied the soon coming Jesus, the messenger, the Messiah, the Christ would come into the world. This is a word of promise many hundred years before even Christ was born. And through now, as God spoke, we all know that Christ was born in Bethlehem 
And before Christ was born, God raised John the Baptist. So we find that there are two individuals in this passage of Scripture. That one person will prepare the way, who is John the Baptist. And true enough, six months earlier, John was born, and then he was raised from the wilderness as an ascetic lifestyle, and he came out and prepared the way for the Messiah, who is our Lord and our God. So it's always God keeping his promises. Now church, when you come to this church, you will find this happening all the time. What we speak from this church is the word of promise. That's the reason why you are born again today. Because you heard the word of promise. Not what Pastor Paul had to say, his wisdom, his uh, stories and this and that, his testimony, what this guy said, what that guy said. No, no, no. When you came here, you heard the word of promise. How God promised and how he kept his promise and how he went about doing it. So we spoke the word of God of promise. And when you believed, when you listened, when you hearkened, when you acknowledged, you received the salvation of your soul. That some of us still not. Maybe the reason is because they're not listening, they're not understanding, they're not believing, they're not walking in it. And as a result, they're still far away. Because nothing for us to do is to believe the word of promise. Faith comes by the word of promise that God has already said that he will do it and he has done it. Now, that's for salvation. Maybe you're saying, Pastor, what about our daily lives? Church, if this God has kept that promise, there are so many promises in the Bible. The pathway, or I'd say that the ch God's church is the place where all manifold blessings are imparted. Did I say that? I said it many times. So today, when you come to church, whether it's on a Sunday or a Wednesday, every time when we gather, the word of promise has been continuously being spoken. That God is a promise-keeping God. That God has promises this, 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 and that. And we keep declaring it week after week. Even our financial exhorters or anybody takes this pulpit, they use the scriptures to tell you, when you do this, when you believe God, God will bless you. God has promised to do that. And He will do it. So, in the church of God, the manifold blessings are actually given to those who would believe the word of promise. Our faith should be rested in the word of promise. This is not only in the church. Right now, we can't gather physically. This is only a premise here. You don't come here today. But you are at home. You are a family. When two or three are gathered, you are a church. You are a body of Christ. Your church should be established on that promise that God has made. He has promised to save our soul. He has saved our soul. Today we are born again. All according to the word of promise. If that God has done that, then he has promised many things to us who are his children. That God will take care of us, will deliver us, will protect us, will bless us, and will prosper us. And he has given so many of his promises in the New Testament, in the Old Testament. All of it, the manifold blessings are ours. It's through God's church that God will impart that blessing. That's why you're a church in the home. You are single, you come to the church, you gather with the saints, you are a body of Christ. So I'm trying to tell you this, that even though you stay at home and you're not part of the church, these blessings are far away from you. There's no way you can receive those blessings. The church is the only place that God will bless his children. And it's always been like that and always will be like that. So the church is a place where you receive all your blessings. So when you come to church, you hear the word of promise, your faith is rested on it, and you start enjoying all the manifold blessings of God. And let me just uh, quote another scripture for you before I move on. It's Galatians 4, verse 4 to 5. But when in God's plan, the proper time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the regulation of the law, so that he might redeem and liberate those who were under the law, that we who believe might be adopted as sons, as God's children, with all rights as fully grown members of a, of a family. This is a scripture that is trying to help us that when the time had fully come, God sent his son. He kept his promise. He told us that he will send his son. For many thousand years, almost two thousand years, they've been waiting and waiting and waiting. When will be, when will be the time? The Jewish people were waiting. Some of them grew patient, impatient. But God kept the time. At the right time, God brought his son into the world. This is a God will never promise us if he can't keep the promise. He promised it 
and he kept the promise and he sent his son into the world. And church, our salvation today is basically because we believe the word of promise. Let me show you a scripture in Galatians uh, 4, verses 22 to 23. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman, Agar, and one by the free woman, Sarah. But the child of the slave woman was born according to the flesh and an ordinary birth, while the son of the free woman was born in fulfillment of the promise. Today we too, another scripture in Galatians 4, 28, and we, believing brothers and sisters like Isaac, are children not merely of physical descent like Ishmael, but we are children born of promise. Born miraculously. Today our born again life is based on our faith in the word of promise. That's why we are born again today. Because we believe the word of promise. In the church of God, the word of promise must be preached. That's what brings life to us. And every promise that God has made must be made known. And we can have that faith to believe that God will honor it. Because why? We are born again according to his promises. Many of them who, claim, who think and claim to be born again are not. Simply because they have not placed their faith in the word of promise. How can the other promises come to pass in their life? It's just deceiving themselves. They're believing something that will never happen because God will only bless through the church. The manifold blessing will only come to the church who are born again because of the word of promise. Now that we are born of the word of promise, we can enjoy all the manifold blessing that comes along because God has promises many more things in life. Whether it's in this side of the world or even thereafter. All promises, we have that faith to believe that God will honor and will keep those promises. Do you agree with me, church? The church, let me say this to you. It's through the church of God that the manifold blessings are made known and been given to the people of God. And we are so blessed that we are in this church because Christ is building this church. So, I don't know about you. Maybe there's something that you've been seeking God, you've been praying for, for your deliverance, for your healing, for your financial breakthrough. you got a problem with your relationship with people. you got a problem with your delinquent children. But please, be rest assured, if you are born again according to the word of promise, then all promises are yes and amen for your life. You can believe God because He will keep that promise. It may take some time and delay, but yet God will always honor His children and all blessings will only come through the church of God. Not from outside. Don't run away from here. Thinking that you can get it outside. No way. It's always through the church. Through the church of God that all this blessing will become yes and amen in your life. Hallelujah. Church, I'm going to move on to the point number two, church. I uh, so much that I wanted to say, but I don't think I have the time because why I want to be sensitive with time. I'm going to take it on to point number two, which is uh, faith in the word of righteousness. Number one, faith in the word of promise. Now, faith in the word of righteousness. So important. The church that Jesus Christ is building is established and founded on the faith in the righteousness of God, the word of righteousness. The gospel that we administer in this church, the gospel word is the gospel of God's righteousness. That's the church that Jesus Christ is building. And all blessings will come through the church of God to those who subscribe, who believe, and who are established in the word of righteousness. Very important. Let me show you a scripture. In Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11, I again saw under the sun, the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong. And neither is bread to the wise, nor riches to the those of intelligence and understanding. No favor to men of ability, but time and chance overtake them all. Solomon in his wisdom by the, by the power of God, is saying that in the world you'll see some people are very intelligent, some people are very wise, strong, and they seem to have the best of this side of the world. It's always the case. The weak one, they are left behind and they get the leftovers. It's always people supposedly, they get the limelight because they're intelligent, they are supposedly have the ability. But when it comes to the salvation, the Solomon is saying, time and chance. Today, we have found God because we are at the right time, at the right place to hear the message from God's church. 
and we at the chance given to us even though we are weak vulnerable and lacking we are like jacob we all acknowledge that we are supplanters we are also swindlers and cheat in our fallen flesh we acknowledged it we came before god in humility we acknowledged it and we received our salvation not because we were strong we were wise and we had all the ability maybe in the world that's the way it goes but in the church of god blessings are rendered to those who put their faith in the word of righteousness and god will bless our lives in psalms 33 verse 16 to 19 the king is not saved by the great size of his army a warrior is not rescued by his great strength a horse is a false hope for victory nor does it deliver anyone by its great strength behold the eyes of the lord is upon those who fear him and worship him with awe inspired reverence and obedience on those who hope confidently confidently in his compassion and loving kindness to rescue their life from death and keep them alive in famine this is a promise the psalmist david is saying that god is not bothered about how great you know in the army in the old time the horse is very important to clinch a victory but today god is saying that for us who are born again as we walk and always establish ourselves in god's righteousness acknowledging that it is god who have saved our soul and given us a new life that even today not only we are saved according to god's righteousness but we live daily believing and establishing ourselves in god's righteousness not our self righteousness not what i did what i didn't do my power my strength my ability my knowledge no 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 we don't put our confidence on that we don't bet on that we put our confidence in god's righteousness which is god's goodness and god's rightness to carry us through to bless us and to establish our life and to give us so many manifold blessings in the church of god so when this church when you come here we keep repeated repetitiously telling you this that you keep hearing it all the time so that your faith will be rested on the word of righteousness the church that jesus christ is building will always will do that because that's where your blessing is rested the manifold blessings are given to those who skillfully train and build their faith in god's righteousness god's church will always have that blessing which god will render to his people in romans 9:16 so then god's choice is not dependent on human will no on human effort the totality of human striving but on god who shows mercy to to whomever he chooses it is sovereign gift so church when you place your faith in god's righteousness you are actually posturing yourself as a person who deserves pity who deserves grace who deserves god's unconditional love and because we do that we receive the manifold blessings in the church of god and i still remember the story i think i preached some time ago many years ago you know a story where you know isaac was getting old his eyes getting dim and then there is supposed to be a, a blessing to his firstborn son was supposed to be Esau but then uh, Jacob will trick him and and uh, he will take the place of his brother and uh, the mother who is a church of God eavesdropping she heard Isaac saying that to Esau go and get me a good aunt for me a goat or lamb and cook for me a good food that I like you know what I like the most and Rebecca was the wife who represent the church she heard it and she said when 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 he saw ran out to do it jacob was still at him he said come my son i'll tell you what to do i know what your father likes the most go behind and get the two goats i'll cook a meal to please your father and then they, of course uh, 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 jacob said how can i do that my father will find out i don't look like my brother i'm not airy like him and when father finds out i'm deceiving him i'll be cursed then she will she will say don't worry son if you are cursed let the curse fall on me today you will find church the church takes the blunt brunt takes all humiliation and ridicule the world doesn't see the born again church which is concealed and people look from outside they curse the church they say all kind of bad things they say the church is not good they are full of hypocrites this all these things are said the church takes all this but do you know that while all this happening 
the true church that Christ is building, God is preserving us among all these things because there is the word of righteousness in this church. We are still being preserved like in a mother's womb. You know, we are always the baby. It's always protected. So God is protecting his church. So a church that God is building, Christ is the head, Christ is building, is still preserved. And Rebecca, who is a church, it teaches you what you should do to please the Father. That two goats represents Jesus Christ, which is the savory food. Today in this church, when you come here, every time we prepare the food for you to bring it before the Father, to bring Jesus, to bring him, the flesh, blood, and the fat, the three things that represent the three witness. And we prepare for you every time. Take it back home. Throughout the week, always bring the righteousness of God before the Father. He'll be pleased with you. And the manifold blessing will be showered upon your home, your family, your children. We do the same thing in the church setting. When you come here, we keep telling you again and again, let your faith be rested in God's righteousness. All the manifold blessings of God will rest upon you, will be poured upon you, will hunt you down. It's exactly what the church, what Rebecca did for Jacob. Let me show you that scripture, church, in Romans 3.10. There is none righteous, none meets God's standard, not even one. That doesn't mean there's none here today. Today we have been established and born again according to God's word of promise, the word of righteousness. Today we are righteous not because of what we did or what we didn't do. Because we are in Christ. The righteousness of God has literally enveloped us. And we are righteous based on faith. And when we walk in this truth daily, acknowledging no matter how you know, ugly your flesh would be, no matter how weak and lacking you are, be shortcoming, in weaknesses, but please remind yourself, it's not based on your flesh, it's based on your spirit. You are righteous, you are sinless, you establish yourself in God's righteousness. The blessings are for you and your family and all that matters to you. The manifold blessing will always be given to you. In Romans 10 verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law, it leads to him and his purpose is fulfilled in him. Granting righteousness to everyone who believes in him as saviour is a gift given to us, the overflowing grace and the gift of righteousness. When you receive Jesus Christ into your heart, when you believe the gospel truth of the water and spirit, you have God's righteousness. And today we are in Christ, in the righteousness of God. And because of him, all blessings are yours. The Father from heaven sees and we present Jesus, the savoury food, before the Father Blessing is yours. The manifold blessing will be always with you and forever will be given to you. What a wonderful thing, church. I can go on and on in this church. Let us move on, church. Point number three, church. The church that Jesus Christ is building, which is a source of all blessing, all manifold blessings, must have this one, church. Point number three. Faith in the word of hope. So we saw the promise we saw the righteousness. Now we're going to look into the hope. In the church of God, I pray and hope that each one of you have always faithfully attended this church, given your time, your talent, your life, your money, that you're always hearing the word of hope in this church. There's no discouragement here. There is no hopelessness in this church because Christ is building the church that Christ is building will have that faith in the word of hope. We hope, we believe that God is able to fulfill all that he has promised. And we hope in that promise because God will never ever fail us. Let me show you a scripture in Jeremiah 29 verses 11 to 12. It says here, For I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster. To give you future and a hope. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. This is a promise given. The time of Jeremiah to the people of God. And that's always been done in this church. We stir your heart. We always say that God will come through. Keep believing. Keep believing and walking in the truth. God will honor you. He will give you a beautiful future. He will lead you out of your darkness, your bondage. Because he has got good plans for you. Not to arm you, but to give you good life. And as long as, you know, we stay true, 
in this gospel through the church of God you will receive the manifold blessings because God's hope is always available and it's so important in this fallen world we're living this time with COVID-19 and all this kind of a thing that we hear the WhatsApp so much a negativity people are saying this and that you can't go out you can't go to the mall the children can't go to school you can't travel so it's quite dampening right and a lot of people are very hopeless hopelessness has set into their heart but we are not church we know these things will happen God has already spoken to us and he said that while this happening you put your hope in me because many of us sometimes when everything is so comfortable everything is going on well and good we have enough money we go and we tend to move away and stray from what God has promised us that how this world will come to an end what is expected of us but when things are like that adversities it gives us the reason to put our hope in God the faith in the hope and the church stands for that in this church we continue to enlarge you to continue to strengthen you to always place your hope in God and God alone in Mark 5 verse 35 to 36 it's a story how God is helping this man while you're still speaking some people came from the synagogue official official's house saying to Jairus your daughter has died why bother the teacher any longer overhearing what was being said Jesus said to the synagogue and officials do not be afraid only keep on believing in me and my power now this is a, a condition that's been given up death has already occurred but yet the Lord will tell you this is God who's able to give life to the dead in your deadness everything seems so difficult everything has been given up you think there is no return there's no way out you're so in bondage and in, in your, your, everything is failing your marriage is failing your children are failing you your health is failing you hello in this condition Jairus daughter was dead what did Jesus say to them and particularly to the officials in the synagogue do not be afraid only keep on believing see we are only called to keep on believing God because he can turn things around for us God is able church because he has the power he has given the church of God the authority to bind and to loosen according to his perfect will he has given us the keys to the kingdom of God Satan cannot prevail in our church in this church there's always hope church we believe that God will always see us through in Romans 8 was 19 to 25 another portion of scripture here but even the whole creation all nature which eagerly for the children of God to be revealed. But the creation is subjected. Who subjected it? God. Subjected to frustration and futility. Not willing. Not willingly because of some intentional fault on his part. But by the will of him. Who is God himself. Who subjected it. In hope that the creation itself will also be freed from his bondage to decay. And gain entrance into the glorious freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been mourning together as in the pains of childbirth until now. What is he saying? I start off with the book of Ephesians. I said that everything has fallen. Yes, physically one day we will die. The nature also will die. But we who have been born again in the spirit, one day we will be restored to the perfection. Similarly, this whole nature is also groaning waiting for the son of man the son of God, all of us or son of man to be raised on that day even they will receive their liberty from their bondage but they are groaning so god has given us a hope and this hope will not fail us this is the promise that god has made to us it's always kept his promises and he's always going to keep it and he'll come to pass and sometimes we have a tendency, you know, in this world, we put our faith in our parents, earthly parents, father, and sometimes they can't keep their promises. Because they are limited, they are mortal. But I tell you, our heavenly father has promised us. He's always kept his promises. There's so far none that he has not kept. He will never make a promise we can't keep it. And God has always kept his promises. So today, spiritually, we are born again. 
In this church, we keep repeating to you, don't worry, you are sick in your body, sometimes you are very, you are growing old, you are becoming weaker as day goes by, and things are not looking good, the world around you, everything is negativity and everything is falling apart, don't worry. We don't put our hope on what we see. Faith is not, faith is basically a substance of things that you hope for. And evidence thing that we not that we we not even see. It's an evidence. So we have to always believe what is unseen, that God has given us a hope beyond the grave, beyond the nature, that it will come to pass at the right time. And finally, church, I'd just give you another scripture verse taken from Philippians 3, 13 to 14, just to encourage you. Faith in the word of promise, faith in the word of righteousness, and faith in the word of hope. And this guy is a good guy. The Apostle Paul is the right person to say this to us. He says here, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What a way to finish his ministry. And what a motivation this is. Paul had been not a good guy before being born again. We all know how he was instrumental in the death of Stephen. And I'm sure back in his mind, he knows that. He has done a lot of damage to the church of God in the initial stage. All the wrong things he has done. He stood against the will of God and went against the church of God. Many were oppressed and harassed by him. All that is still in his mind. The old man is still there. I'm sure time to time he's thinking about that. What he did was wrong. He hurt many people. But he's not letting that app hold him back. He's pressing on in the new creation life. That hope that God has given. The heavenly, heavenward hope to win that goal. To serve Jesus. And I'm saying this to us. Sometimes in our life we make many mistakes. Knowingly, unknowingly. We know that what we did was wrong and wrong moves. A lot of consequences because of that. But don't dwell on those things, church. Place your hope on God. And God has given you a new life. He has forgiven and forgotten. We got to press on and move on and serve God. And you will have this blessing in this church. Because the manifold blessings are always conveyed to you, to the church of God. No matter how you feel outward there, when you're outside in the world, you feel so discouraged, so disheartened. When you come to church on a Sunday morning, when you come on a Wednesday, this church will continue to always give you hope. Because in Christ there is hope, the hope of glory. God is always there. So you always will put your faith in the hope that God has given to us. The church today, we have learned three things. That God's church will always will render the manifold blessings. In the form of when you put your faith in the word of promise, the word of righteousness, and in the word of hope. And all blessings, the manifold blessings, the many faceted, the many types, all blessings that you're seeking and looking for will be yours in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much, church. Hope that you've been blessed. God bless you.